This Poetry Burst video explores Exposure by Wilfred Owen Our brains ache in the merciless iced east winds that knive us. Wearied, we keep awake because the night is silent. Low drooping flares confuse our memory of the salient. Worried by silence, sentries whisper, curious, nervous, but nothing happens. Watching, we hear the mad gusts tugging on the wire like twitching agonies of men among its brambles. Northward, incessantly, the flickering gunnery rumbles far off like a dull rumour of some other war. What are we doing here? The poignant misery of dawn begins to grow. We only know war lasts, rain soaks and clouds sag stormy. Dawn. Massing in the east, her melancholy army attacks once more in ranks on shivering ranks of grey. But nothing happens. Sudden successive flights of bullets streak the silence, less deathly than the air that shudders black with snow. With sidelong flowing flakes that flock, pause and renew, we watch them wandering up and down the wind's nonchalance. But nothing happens. Pale flakes with fingering stealth come feeling for our faces. We cringe in holes back on forgotten dreams and stare, snow-dazed, deep into grassier ditches. So we drowse, sun-dozed, littered with blossoms trickling where the blackbird fusses. Is it that we are dying? Slowly our ghosts drag home, glimpsing the sunk fires, glozed with crusted dark red jewels, Crickets jingle there. For hours the innocent mice rejoice. The house is theirs. Shutters and doors all closed. On us the doors are closed. We turn back to our dying. Since we believe not otherwise can kind fires burn, nor ever suns smile true on child or field or fruit, for God's invincible spring our love is made afraid. Therefore, not loath, we lie out here. Therefore we're born for love of God seems dying. Tonight this frost will fasten on this mud and us, shriveling many hands, puckering foreheads crisp. The burying party, picks and shovels in shaking grasp, pours over half-known faces. All their eyes are ice, but nothing happens. The poem explores a group of soldiers in a World War I trench suffering from exposure to the weather. In the middle part of the poem, they hear north of their position a far-off artillery bombardment and then closer, a series of bullets. In the later segment of the poem, we see them experiencing slightly better weather, which may be part of their imagination, of part of a memory of better times, or metaphorically, part of them moving on to a better place, perhaps even dying. By the end of the poem, we see them going home, either in memory or again in a metaphorical sense and dying and moving on to a better place. The poem ends with the brutal image of the burying party, taking picks and shovels to break the frozen ground and bury their fallen comrades. The poem explores the power of nature and the horror of war. It provides a first-hand knowledge of the war. Owen himself fought, and many of the poems that he wrote were written in gaps in the fighting. The title is a metaphor for the information which Owen wanted to expose, to reveal the truth about the war to the public at home who really only saw propaganda. The repeated focus on nothing happening emphasises the way in which war is sometimes an ordinary horror. Boredom and the weather are the most damaging factors. The poem is a lament. The soldiers are lost, confused and wandering in purgatory. They are damaged by their new lives and unable to fit back into their old ones. In our first key quotation, our brains ache in the merciless iced east winds that knive us. We see the soldiers attacked by cold weather. The pronoun our and the noun brains is combined with the adjective merciless, the verb naive and the pronoun us. 
The pronouns create a sense of the soldier's unity. The soldiers are a group who will remain together even after such horrible experiences. This idea is juxtaposed with the weather's malevolent, evil presence. The verb naive literally describes how the soldiers are being hit with sharp, sharp cold wind. Symbolically, it's part of an extended metaphor where the writer shows the weather actively attacking them. Because it is their brains which ache, the metaphor is used to amplify the idea that soldiers are suffering emotional traumas, not simply physical ones. The poem moves to explore the idea that slowly our ghosts drag home. Here, the soldiers are described metaphorically as ghosts. The adverb slowly, the noun ghosts, form a metaphor added to the verb drag and the noun home. The metaphor of the ghosts literally describes the death of the soldiers. The verb drag is literally referring to the pain of leg injuries, but it also reminds the reader of all the pain they have suffered emotionally. It creates a sense of entrapment that it is difficult to escape the war, which is emphasised by the adverb slowly. The idea of ghosts may also be a metaphor for the way that the soldiers' old lives have ended. It symbolises the trauma of war because they are not the same men they were, but simply shadows of their old selves. In the poem Exposure, Wilfred Owen uses metaphor to create a lonely, lost, half-damned atmosphere. The adverb slowly amplifies this sense of purgatory. It makes it seem as if they cannot escape the war, even in their minds or after death. The writer has done this to remind the reader of the horror of war. The reader is challenged to react to this horror by changing society and the way in which we fight. On us, all doors are closed. Here we see literal and metaphorical doors, pathways, futures being barred to the soldiers. The pronoun us the noun doors and the verb close combine to form the metaphor. The noun doors literally refers to the options that the soldiers have and to the doors of their homes which they cannot reach. Metaphorically, however, the doors may represent heaven. In this metaphor, the soldiers are trapped in purgatory and they cannot escape their suffering immediately. The pronoun us in the centre of this metaphor gives the reader some reassurance. It emphasises the sense that even if they cannot escape, they are together. Symbolically, the door also represents a wider escape. They cannot return to their normal lives because they are so changed or damaged by war. The writer has done this to create a forceful, despairing atmosphere. The reader at the time would have known men affected by the war who could not resume their old lives due to shell shock, unemployment, the end of their marriage. This would evoke a strong sense of sympathy and of the futility of war. Final key quotation, all their eyes are ice. Here, the soldiers metaphorically have frozen to death. They are also dead inside. The noun eyes and the noun ice form a metaphor. The metaphor implies that soldiers have frozen to death. It implies that soldiers are not dead, but traumatised. Their emotions are frozen. The experience of war is presented as a brutal dehumanisation. The men are lost, their souls are frozen and the world does not seem to react. The repeated reference to, but nothing happens, emphasises the terrible indifference and acceptance of suffering in World War I. People simply accepted that events had to unfold the way they did, and Owen uses his poem to challenge and shake this acceptance. <laughs>